Hey guys, it's time to. Oh, beauty, eh? So there's a few different ways you can take off in the hip, and I'm going to show you three of them today. So the first one is a conventional or rolling takeoff, which is much like you do in any old airplane. The second is a vertical takeoff with acceleration in ground effect. And the third is a vertical takeoff with acceleration out of ground effect. So for the first one, really all we're going to do is just roll down the runway. And at about 100 kilometers per hour, we will ease back on our cyclic and then add a little bit of collective and climb on out. For the second one, we'll lift up into a ground effect hover about three to five meters above the ground. Uh, cyclic forward, pick up airspeed in that ground effect hover, and without touching the collective at all, we will move from ground effect hover out of ground effect using effective translational lift, which we'll talk about later. And for the third and final one, we will lift up straight off the ground to about 25 to 30, maybe perhaps more meters in the air, and then accelerate forward from there. So I'm going to show you each one of these, and then we're going to come back and talk about the concepts and how to execute these smoothly. And we'll also talk about why you might choose one over another, depending on your scenario. So for the first one, all we're really going to do, and all of them are going to start basically the same way. We're going to perform a hover check. So we know we need to lean back about three degrees and over about one degree. We're going to take our brake off here, keep our nose pointed down the runway and just lift up to about three to five meters. So add, slowly add our collective. Up we go, correct for any movement. Cool. And then you can trim whenever you're satisfied that you are in a reasonably stable hover. And then set back down. All right. So I've still got some collective applied here. We want to be light on wheels for this. And we're just, once we're light on wheels, we're just going to start rolling forward with some forward cyclic. You don't need much. You can see the controls indicator in the top left, how little I really have. And we're just going to start picking up speed. You can steer with your anti-torque pedals and a little bit of cyclic roll. Just try to keep yourself pointed down the runway, which I'm not great at. Just using anti-torque pedals, really. And then at about 100 kilometers per hour or so as we cross that, anywhere in the 100 to 120 range. I'm just going to ease off a little bit on our cyclic, and we'll lift up off the ground. And add a little bit of collective and push our cyclic forward again. Now we want to maintain approximately 120 kilometers per hour as we climb out. And that's pretty much all there is to a conventional rolling takeoff. Alright, so for our second kind of takeoff, what we're going to do is lift up into a ground effect hover. It's so about 3 to 5 meters again. And instead of setting back down, this time we're just going to stay there. And once we're stable, we're trimmed, we're happy, we're going to pitch forward just a little bit with the cyclic pitch. And then accelerate up to, again, about 100 to 120 kilometers per hour. And this time we won't actually have to change anything. We can just continue to hold that same cyclic forward. Um, amount, that same pressure, and we can leave our collective where it is. So let's just climb up here into our hover. Let my brake off. Same idea once again. Get ourselves into the air. Does not have to be very high. About there will do. Get yourself to somewhere where you're reasonably happy and stable. And trim it out. And 
Now we're just going to pitch forward a little bit. And as we start to pick up speed, we're going to need a little bit of right cyclic roll to stay lined up. And then we'll ease off on that as we get past about 16, 20 knots. I know I'm using knots. That's just the figure that I know for um, this. I'll explain it later when we talk about concepts. But try to keep yourself lined up down the runway. I have not touched my collective. And all I'm doing is just maintaining this same forward cyclic pressure. Steering a little bit with my anti-torque pedals. And as we get to 120 kilometers per hour, we can reduce our, or we can pull some aft cyclic and just climb. And so I still haven't touched my collective. I'm still using the same amount of power that I was before, which wasn't enough power to get me more than about five meters off the ground, but now here I am up at 50, just by using forward momentum, forward airspeed. All right, for our last takeoff, we are stuck in the forest somewhere. There's no room around us whatsoever for any kind of ground effect takeoff. We're in this little tiny clearing. The only way out is straight up. So that's what we're going to do. So this is going to work much like the last uh, takeoff we saw, except we're going to climb a little higher before we start to move forward. This is going to be the hardest on the helicopter. The helicopter is going to have to work the hardest to get you off the ground because you're not going to have the assistance of ground effect for this one. But it'll work basically anywhere as long as you're within maximum weight tolerances for it. And that's kind of the key. So we're going to do the same thing we've done for all the rest. We're going to do a hover check first of all in ground effect. Try to get up about 3 to 5 meters. correct my track IR here. Now this one is really important that we don't drift around too much because we don't really have much room to drift around. Once we're happy with that hover, we just continue to add collective a little at a time. Keep our nose pointed in the same direction, ideally into the wind, if there is any. And just try to lift ourselves straight up. Rotor diameter is 23.3 meters in this helicopter, so we are not out of ground effect until we reach 24 meters altitude, so here-ish. We're now about 30, 30 meters in the air. Now we're going to go a little higher for good measure. And then much like our previous takeoff, we're just going to add some forward cyclic now and accelerate until we begin to climb on our own. So we add airspeed, go through effective translational lift. And now we should be able to reduce our collective sum Reduce our cyclic pitch angle some, and still maintain level forward flight. Okay, let's talk concepts. So for all of those takeoffs, there are three concepts that matter to us. I'm going to leave links to them below, and we're going to go into them just as far as we need to to explain what's going on. Those three concepts are called effective translational lift, transverse flow, and gyroscopic precession. So the first one is effective translational lift, and this is what we used for the first two takeoffs in order to get off the ground, or in order to get out of a ground effect hover, I should say. So a helicopter's blades are least efficient when it's in a hover and dead calm wind. That's when the angle of attack on the blades has to be the greatest in order to move the most air, and you need more engine power to do that. 
as we start moving forward or as wind speed increases, we need less angle blade angle to produce the same lift. In other words, less collective to produce the same lift. So what you saw was we lifted off the ground in the second takeoff, for example, started flying forward, and then as we picked up airspeed, that lift got, those blades got more and more efficient and we started climbing without changing our collective at all because we were able to generate more lift with the same power as we picked up speed. So effective translational lift is something that you achieve at around 30 kilometers per hour or about 16 knots. And the faster you go, the more efficient it gets, the more beneficial it gets. Now this is really useful for taking off in a helicopter that is too heavy to just lift straight up. And it also makes it a lot easier on the helicopter because you're not stressing the engine as much. Uh, you're using the efficiency of effective translational lift to get yourself up into the air. So whenever possible, especially if you're loaded up, you want to use, you want to make use of this, this transition from ground effect into out of ground effect through forward airspeed. Now the other two are kind of linked. So transverse flow, the simplest way to explain it is that at very low air speed, so before effective translational lift kicks in, so under 30 kilometers per hour, the angle of the air approaching and crossing through the rotor disc is going to be closer to straight up and down at the back of the rotor disc and closer to horizontal at the front of the rotor disc. This is going to produce more lift in the front half of the rotors. I'm going to jump out into an external cam here and show you. So from overhead, uh, the front half of the rotor disc will generate more lift than the back half just due to the angle of the air washing through the rotor disc. And what that would cause, in uh, an all logical sense, would be the front of the helicopter should pitch up and the back should pitch back, pitch down, because it's not generating as much lift. But there's another concept called gyroscopic precession, which says that any effect or any impact to a gyroscope, the impact or the effect of it is felt 90 degrees later in the rotation. So that lack of lift in the back half of the rotor disc is actually felt as a lack of lift in the left half, the left hemisphere of the rotor disc. So instead of the helicopter pitching up, what it wants to do is roll to the left at very low air speeds below 30 kilometers per hour or 16 knots. So what this means for you as the pilot is once you transition from hover into forward flight, until you cross into, until you achieve effective translational lift, ETL, you will need to add a little bit of, in this helicopter, right cyclic roll to keep yourself lined up and flying straight. So we're going to take a look at those things one more time here. So if we lift up into a ground effect hover here at about three to five meters off the ground, not too high, try to get ourselves reasonably stable where we're not translating left or right at all. Now if all I do is just add a little bit of forward cyclic, we'll see what happens here. I'm not going to touch any other controls. I'm just adding some forward cyclic. I'm going to try to keep the nose pointed down the runway. And already you can see here we go drifting off to the left. Now if I continue to pick up airspeed, add a little more forward cyclic, I'm still not compensating for this at all. Then we get our buffeting. And then suddenly I'm not drifting anymore. So the buffeting happens as transverse flow gets to its most extreme point where the differential lift between the front half and the back half of the rotor disc or the left and the right half I suppose is at its greatest and that's what causes the shaking in the cockpit or the buffeting there 
And then right after that, we get into, we achieve effective translational lift. All right, so we're back in a sort of stable ground effect hover here. And this time, as I transition into forward flight, I'm going to compensate with some right cyclic roll. And this time, I'm still reasonably straight on that path. Now we're going to get the buffeting in the cockpit here. And then we'll move into, we'll achieve ETL. And then I'm just not changing my cyclic at all, and we're gonna start drifting to the right because I've been compensating for transverse flow, which is no longer affecting us. So now you can see that we are drifting off to the right. So for you as the pilot in the hip, this effectively means that as you start off into forward flight, you need to add a little bit of right cyclic and then once the buffeting kicks in and the buffeting stops, you need to stop that. You basically just cut it out. Return to the position you were at in your stable hover. So finally, we're just gonna show effective translational lift one more time. So we're gonna do this hover and then accelerate in ground effect. So I'm in a moderately stable hover here. I'm not drifting around too much, just a little bit forward. What we're going to do is add forward cyclic and then a little bit of right roll until buffeting gets intense and then we'll ease off on the right roll. We're never going to change our collective at all. It's going to stay right where it is now. My hand won't even be on my physical throttle. So we're going to nose down just a little, pitch forward steer with our anti-torque pedals. As we get just a little bit of speed, we add a little bit of right cyclic roll, try to keep ourselves in line. And then as we accelerate, there's the buffeting. And as that stops, I no longer need to compensate for transverse flow and I can ease off on my cyclic roll. And now we have more efficient lift. And so just by using cyclic alone and by changing our angle of attack here, if I pull back a little bit on the cyclic, we can climb pretty great distance all without touching our collective ever. But if we slow down again, what will end up happening is we will eventually fall back into that same ground effect hover we started in because without the forward airspeed, we don't have enough power to get off the ground more than a few meters. So that's three kinds of takeoffs in the hip and the concepts behind it. And the last thing we need to talk about is when you might use these. So the conventional rolling takeoff is something that you'll basically never use. There isn't generally a good reason to do it when you can do a hovering um, ground effect hover and then accelerate in ground effect take off instead. That one is going to be the easiest on your helicopter in almost all situations since you're not spinning up the wheels, you're not abusing the nose gear or the um, wheels at all. And that's going to get you up in the air with just about any loadout, any kind of cargo weight as long as you don't exceed your maximum limits. The vertical takeoff is something you're only going to do when you don't really have a choice when you have no room for forward movement, you have to go straight up and that's your only option. That's when you'll do that. There's a fourth kind of takeoff that I didn't talk about and that is very similar to the ground effect hover takeoff. In that one, you hover a little bit lower and when you pitch forward, your nose wheel touches the ground, just the nose wheel. And you can roll that one along the ground and have a little bit better steering with it and then you'll transition into lift as you um, accelerate as well. That's pretty much it. I hope that all made sense. If I got something wrong or I missed something, please let me know below in the comments and I will see you next time for landings.